happy Thursday. It's the 23rd of April and we've come through a period of fairly cool weather. Uh, really slightly below average temperatures. Daytime highs not getting far above freezing. Some days not even above freezing. So today this is just a real gift. And uh, I don't have a lot of work to do in the apiary so I'm doing up a bunch of little jobs around the yard and particularly with the apiary and the bees. Uh, yesterday I put my my new prototype hive stands in place. I love the way they look. I can't wait to manage the bees on those hive stands. Today I'm addressing my fence. I built this fence a while ago and I'm not going to tell you how long ago but it was a while ago and I ran out of material so I never quite finished it. I have to finish a different corner but I'll use this corner as an explanation as to what I'm going after. So this is one way to build a fence corner so that you can tension the fence and the fence corner doesn't uh, doesn't collapse and start leaning down. Now these do look like they're leaning a little bit but that's probably just because I didn't drill the hole quite straight. It's a little bit difficult if you don't have a spotter to see if the hole is straight or not but you know for this application it's fine. My fenced area isn't that big. It's maybe 100 feet by a couple hundred feet. So what we've got going on here and yesterday I put on these these uh, garden hose. This is an old garden hose that sprung a leak. So I put this garden hose on here just to keep these support wires away from the electric wires and I've turned that fence off. That's why I'm not jumping. So if you think about how this is tensioned, this is the corner post. The fence is tensioned this direction and pulling on this direction. So this corner post will tend to go both this way and that way. At On average then it goes at a 45. So that's a problem. You don't need your, your corner post leaning in as you pull the fence against it. So here's what uh, you can do is one way to do it is you can put another post over here at the end okay and then put a post between the two and I'm using this piece of rebar as a pointer that's what's in here I've just drilled a hole through the top here into the end of that post and that's really only there to hold this post up off the ground against gravity that's all it does it doesn't have to be anything too special um, I'm going to cut these off. They're a little bit of a safety hazard. You can tear your clothes or worse on that. So those those are going to get cut off. I was cutting those off yesterday. My hacksaw kept falling apart. So threw the hacksaw in the bush and uh, we'll use a more high-tech way to do that. So back to the explanation. As this post, of course, at the ground, the post is in the ground it's in a hole so you can kind of pull against that no problem and you're just pulling against the ground that will kind of pull in over the years but you can adjust this all as time goes by so you can pull against the bottom but when you pull against the top you can pull this in this way and that's where this second post and this top come in into play as well as a support wire which is what's in this garden hose thing so follow me here as you tension the top wire that pulls the top of the post in this direction which pushes on this top rail here which pushes on the top of this post here now this has got a support wire that runs from here to the bottom of that corner post okay the corner post is fairly uh, stationary you're pulling against the ground so what that does is as you pull on the bottom and as you pull on the top by way of this system that makes that corner post pull straight against the fence or make the fence pull straight against the corner post because this top is pulling against the bottom of the corner post okay there's nothing pulling on this post at all the wires are are in uh, grommets that, that slip there's nothing pulling at all all of the pulling goes against the end post the corner post by way of these little insulators so I think that's probably clear I'm going to go over the other corner and uh, 
I'll put that one together and, and so you can kind of see how this how this goes together all right the first thing I need to do is cut these fence posts which will end up being the top rails I don't particularly want to measure against the top here of the posts and put them in that way because I don't know if these posts are splayed in or out I'm going to line it up with the bottom of the posts and mark them normally I'd eyeball that with a chainsaw I can't get my chainsaw started right now so I'll mark them I'll take them back to the shop and that bee is going to sting me get a nice mark on that one and a good mark on that one I got my trusty little helper right here so we'll just put those right on the forks and go cut them up okay I've cut my posts you may see Jay in the background he's got some bees here he's going to manage so that is that one you've never used a called a ship auger bit boy that's a pleasure to use those they've got a little screw tip this one's a bit beat up I might have to push on it a bit but generally if these are sharp you don't have to push at all they feed themselves so we'll drill some holes now you maybe can't tell but this is a little bit of an uphill that direction I'm going to drill this one first so that if I drill that one first I want to have it fairly high this one is downhill so I might come up too high on on this by the time I get here you'll see what I mean in a minute see even at that I'm really not pushing on that at all Yeah, one bar out of four. So that was a 1.5 amp battery. This is a nine. That's the second biggest battery Milwaukee makes. They make a 12 for some of their larger tools. So I'm gonna stick this in here. Give it a whack with the hammer. But I don't want it coming through very far. Barely at all. becomes difficult to hold. It wants to rotate. Like that. There's no doubt copious amounts of sawdust in that hole, which aren't going to do me any favors. So try and get this one fit. I'm plenty long here, and because these posts are not freshly drilled in the ground, I can't easily push them apart. 
I'm gonna try and eyeball something close to level here. We'll drill it right there. Level is only aesthetic. Plenty for her. See why I call that tractor my handy helper? I think I used my big hammer last time. This is uh, none too big a hammer for this. Oh, it's so cross-eyed I could hit it. I think that's bottomed. you put your top bar, your top rail, the more brace wire you need. You'll see the brace wire here in a few minutes. And it doesn't really gain you much moving that top rail up. You can do this with a solid post instead of a brace wire, but when you do, you put it the other way. I'll try and touch on that when I get the brace wire going. to the point where I can't hold it. I think if I couldn't, I'd just run the end of the, run the, the, if I couldn't hold it, I think I'd run the tire of the tractor over it. Hold it down. Oh, 
Holding it that way is fairly easy. Backing up, not so much. smell yummy to them or what now so I'll do the same thing Imagine that I actually lined that up. That's amazing. I don't suppose there's much that makes you feel like a farmer than fencing. Now I can see already that that is much more square than it was. my microphone now this doesn't uh, do this in the other the other corners I did this with staples but honestly I can't find my staples <laughs> so I'm gonna put rebar in here I'll show you why through cut it off when I'm done need something for that uh, tension wire to grab onto down there and these bees are all over me she just stung me in the forehead oh bag Oh boy. Why am I minding my own business? My own business and she stings me in the forehead. You're a farmer if you own fencing pliers, eh? They're almost going up my nose. I wouldn't own no fencing pliers, but when I bought this property there was barbed wire fence everywhere. And I had no animals, and no intention to have animals took it all down and I decided to buy myself some fencing pliers for that job and they work 
well I have to kind of thread it in this side and what I did before was I crossed so I went around that post that way and around this post the other way garden hose for insulating the support wire that corner that I just finished. I actually need uh, a little bit of insulation here yet. Uh, this one here. This one here is touching the fence. This one here. So I need to insulate that. This black fencing stuff I just extended. Uh, down to there first I just got these long 2 by 4s This is a very heavy, heavy fence material. You can't even bend it any more than that. I don't know exactly what it's called or where you get it, but it came with the farm when I bought the place. So making good use of it, I have a little bit more here, but it sure helps to block the wind from the north. Bees are all over the Ultra B substitute. Supplement, substitute, whatever you want to call that. I'm not going to get in that debate. You know what it is. It's Ultra B from Man Lake. They love it. But I'll tell you, when the trees come out in pollen, this will be abandoned immediately. And I think by the look of my willow trees, that will be in the next two days. Now that we have some warm weather, that could be tomorrow. It could be Saturday. So they're having an awful good time on that. An open feeder here. They're having an awful good time in that as well. Pretty orderly. I'm not seeing a ton of fighting in here, which is interesting. Often it's much more of a, a frenzy than this. They must get it on them and they come up here because it's all over the top. Now I just have to do up the fence, flip the 
the switch. I need to get a little bit of insulation on that wire before I do. It won't work very well if it's grounded out. So anyway, that's today in the apiary. So stay well, stay home, and have fun.